something unique is happening. You're being revived. Your life is coming together. And can you tell me why that's going on with you? Because you're meeting with God in the morning every day. Now, if you're not doing that, then you've got a long ways of goodness to receive. Because it's not until we spend that time consistent with God that he's able to change our carnality. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God you didn't bring your flesh today. <laughs> How many know it's not what you're taught, it's what you're caught? And what you drop, just leave it there. Don't go get it. That's a temptation, see. All right, amen. Once football gets done, then I'll have a basketball or a baseball. <laughs> amen. So it's not what you're taught. It's what you embrace and catch as truth. A couple more things I want to bring you. So our eyes are on Jesus, right? And our eyes are not to be on the world system because it's failing. That's why people are so bummed out. They've got so much investment in the world. And when God says, come out from the world, he's separate. So we need to adjust that. Another thing, too, our eyes are to be off of other people. We look to other people for our news. We look to other people for wisdom and insight would be wrong. Because it says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, it says, He who trusts in the arm of the flesh will be like a bramble bush over in eastern Washington caught in the fence. <laughs> I paraphrased a little. <laughs> a bramble bush. You have no roots. There's nothing drawing out. So there are many Christians today that got their eyes on people. They're what I call hero followers. Now, we have our favorite preachers. I'm not talking about that. We have the, I like to listen to favorite teachers on, on the word because they minister to me. I'm not talking about that. But if you look at it, everybody's looking for a Messiah. They're looking for some form of relief. Who's our relief? That's why we're to go into the world and share the gospel. Tell people about being born again and they can have peace with God. Say amen. And then the third thing we keep our eyes off is the trickiest of all ourselves listen if you get offended easily there's too much of you alive we're supposed to be crucified with christ amen we're supposed to be dead to ourselves amen we're supposed to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him say amen so what are we doing getting upset and talking about all this goober goober stuff because we're immature still and that is easy for the devil to steal candy out of babies <laughs> hands to mislead them to misguide them hello god wants us to grow up in the lord say amen and look at your neighbor and say hey you're looking pretty mature there <laughs>
Say this with him. I am a spiritual being. Colossians 1. Okay, so if you're a spiritual being, what are we doing walking in the natural all the time? Good question. Now, folks, let me ask you. I didn't believe this, but I believe this now. How many here believe that God has made it so we can not only walk in the spirit, we can actually live in the spirit? Hello? And the way the enemy makes it sound is it's real hard. It isn't real hard. There's just some principles and things that you need to put to practice where God does the rest for us. Hello? You see, I used to believe I put the armor on. No. I go into the dressing room like I did when I was getting married. I went and got fitted for a suit. Every day when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, you're going into God's throne room, but also dressing room where he dresses you for the day. Most people need to see a picture of this for the reality of their faith to grasp it. If you don't see good pictures, the word paints pictures and paints them in such a way that we can release our faith. We can see it. When you get to a point where you believing for you to be whole instead of hoping to get healed, then healing is yours. When you can see yourself healed more than you can see yourself sick, you're on your way. Because we have spiritual eyes, we're a spiritual being. Someone say, oh me. You see, we're living in the days right now, folks, where you're going to start to see the manifestations of the power of God. You're going to start seeing the dead raised. You're going to start seeing people who are attacking the church fall over dead. Because God is now in the end time harvest. What he's doing right now is he's picking and hand choosing those whose hearts are pure towards him. And he's anointing them and he's appointing them for the work of the ministry. He's choosing certain individuals. He's the chooser. We're not. He's choosing certain individuals to be like special forces. To go in stealth. And do work. And Dan, I remember uh, a guy named David Randall. I think he's gone on to be with the Lord. Um, wonderful brother. Him and I got in the car and God led us by the spirit. I told you a little bit about this. And as he led us by the spirit, in other words, telling us where to go. God led me up to my old neighborhood. Up, up in Des Moines. And he led me to my old playground when I was a kid. And David and I got out and we stretched our hands and said, God said, pray over the land. And we did. And the spirit of God went and moved. The wind start picked up. And, and it was just like God cleansed everything. Unbeknownst to me, a half a year later, Casey Treat put his first church there. Now, are you saying it's because you did that, Pastor Kerry? No, I'm saying that men and women obeying God doing what God wants, God purposes and plans for things to happen. Whether we obey him in that or whether we not, it's up to you. You see, when I meet with God regularly, he sensitizes me and he gets me conditioned to hear his voice, to have his mind, to see as he sees, and to move as he moves. Say amen. That's you too. You are that. The problem is you need to be trained. I'm going to say this. A lot of churches you go to, they're good churches. They're lovely churches. But they're giving you psychology. Be a good person. Do this, this, and this. Hello? And they got a little list there. You go down. In conclusion. You know, and which is okay. I got that in Bible college. But no, you want the spirit of God showing each one of us what he has for you. So that you are able by faith to stand up and walk it out in this life. Amen. That's who you are. God's word working in you. God working on you. God working through you. You're unbeatable in God. In God. Outside, we just a bunch of noise. <laughs> Moving right along. Let's look at our scripture. Now, Jesus is at the, in Samaria, at a pool, a well spring, okay? Jacob's well. And there's a woman there about noon because she was the town tart. Okay, she slept with everybody. She was one of those. They just didn't know any better. But Jesus went out of his way to talk to her. 
unusual. You, you check it out. How many times Jesus left what he was doing to go talk to somebody. So this lady was very, very important, even though her life was ruined. Here's something I want to share with you. Have you had your life trashed when you were younger? That's because you have probably a big call of God on your life, seeing it wanted to take you out early. Don't forget, he's a destroyer, like a thief. So, so he's talking to this woman, he says, but the hour is coming. She asked him, he says, look, aren't the Jews say you, you worship at Jerusalem? And, and us uh, Gentiles say that we worship in this mountain where this well is. And Jesus says, but the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers, high true worshipers, will worship the Father. Now look at the two words. Where? In spirit and truth. Let me talk to you. Is our Father a spirit? So you're not going to reach him in your flesh. So get out of it. Oh, I can't understand when my prayers just are bouncing off the ceiling. It's because you're praying in your flesh. Off the top of your head. Not the little child heart that you need to pray from. Don't get mad at me. Our Father's a spirit. You're a spirit being. When you communicate to God, you've got to get out of your head, into your heart, and God listens. Hello. God's face is against those that do evil, but his ears and eyes are open to those who are righteous. Hello, righteous. Our God is a spirit, and those that worship him, the word worship means serve, live, and adore him. You have to do it from your spirit, not from your flesh. I don't care how much noise you make. How giddy you are. If it's not coming from your spirit, you're just making noise and giddy. Hello. Don't get mad at me. We want to make sure everything comes out of our heart like a child. Sincerity. Amen. That's why it says, worship him in the spirit and in truth. That word truth there means also sincerity. To be open and honest and sincere. Don't con God. For God is a spirit, and those that worship, serve, adore, and are with him must worship him in spirit and in what? So, Satan's wiped out there because he's no longer... Now, I'm going to tell you something now. You might want to... Satan does no longer have any spiritual power. He has a mental ability to con and to create fear and get you to bite after things. He baits us. He baits us. Hello. And if we dwell on it, he will get in our hair. And if we dwell on it longer, we'll get into our thoughts. And that's when we lean to cast down our imaginations. Are you still with me? So when you come to church, you leave your flesh in the car. You don't think about how important you are and how not important you are. You think, all I want to do is I just want to be one with God. When you hit that mark, healing, soundness just flows in our midst. Hello, that's what we want. We want to be able to give you the understanding of how things work so you can work along with God in the working thereof. All right, we're going to cover these four areas. Oh boy, here we go. You're still in Colossians chapter 1, right? Okay. These four areas we're going to cover. Number one, we're going to talk about living in the spirit, having the mind of God on things. First point. Second point, well, be spiritual. We are being spiritual is being under the control of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain. You see, none of us are mature. We're, we're some of us are more mature than others, but he's not talking about the flesh at all. Sometimes we think about spiritual maturity is me never making this mistake, walking around. As a <laughs> no, he's talking about when we yield to God and the spirit of God is moving on us. Suddenly we don't operate in our power. We operate in the Holy Spirit's power, which is perfect. And suddenly we stop, we're in the flesh, and we say, Father, use me now however you want fit. Boom, we're moved over in the spirit, and suddenly we have the mind of God. Not your mind. Get your mind out of there. I remember going up Eli Hill. Anybody here know where Bonnie Lake is? I used to live in Bonnie Lake. I was going up Eli Hill, 
And I was just seeking God, and I was saying, Lord God, this is a great day, and I'm just singing and having a great time. That's what I do. You know, might drive you wild, but... And I'm going up Eli Hill. By the time I got to the top of the hill, I don't know how I got there. I just everything sort of moved into the spirit realm. And as I got up over the hill and down the dip and up to 214th, where Safeway, and they got all these new buildings there now, and there was a man laying in the road, and whole oh, about 30, 40 people all crowded around him. There was no light at that time. It was just 410 Highway and 214th Crossing. And this guy's laying on the road, and God says, get over there, just, just like that. So I drove my little Volkswagen Beetle right up there, and it was like God grabbed me by the crepe of the neck and just got me out, walked me over there, and I says, get out of the way, everyone. <laughs> what a mouth. <laughs> get out of the way, everyone. God's going to take care of this man. And I walked right up. Now, remember, I'm not in charge. God is running here. So I'm listening to God use me as I'm watching him do this. Using my mouth, using, back out of the way, reached my hand down and the blood and everything. And I said, God, save this man alive and get this man to be healed and whole. And then I said, thank you, Father. And everybody went, whoa. I don't know what they were seeing. But the man sat right up. And when they did that, the crowd went back further. And I said, well, have a great evening. God bless you. I don't want any credit. This is God. God doesn't want attention when he's doing something. He wants you, you know. So I didn't want any attention. So I got my, and they all were waving. Bye, man of God. See you later, man of God. Did I decide one day I was going to do that? Or No. All we need to do is be consistent with God. And God will move us sometimes into the spirit. Whereby you instantly become mature. It isn't your maturing. You're not growing up better than everybody else. Because you, you graduated. No. You're under submission of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Under God's control. That's what it means to be spiritual. Everyone say I got it. Being spiritual isn't running around correcting everybody because they don't know any better. Being spiritual is being under the sway and the power of God where you move supernatural and miracles, signs, and wonders are the result. Amen. That's who you are. And you say, well, I don't really know how to do We'll train you. I've been training people this way for years. Missionaries, people all over. Yeah, I know that I made a big mistake when I was younger. And everybody threw me away. But I didn't stop ministering. I didn't stop leading people to the Lord. I just detached myself from those that judged me. And once sought help. Listen, if you're at church, somebody's blown it and they're looking to be restored. Don't turn them away. I was turned away by all the churches in this area and I went to some my, my friends they told me to get the heck out of town nobody's heard my side of the story one day I'll tell them it's not important what's important is that we obey God we get with God these are the end times these are the very supernatural times that God has been telling you to watch for this is the end time harvest of revival now, you can either be a part of it, or you can let it pass you by. Someone say, oh, me. So we'll cover these things. Living in the Spirit, too. Being spiritual is being under the control of God, what we do and say. Three, being spiritual is projecting, listen, projecting the fruit and the power of God from you. Folks, how many here remember the day that you had projectors in your classroom? What did they do? They put a picture up on a screen, didn't they? Well, you are a projector. Your job is to project Jesus. Hello. Okay, what do you mean? Well, when I first started learning about praying, I, I prayed from the top of my head. It sounded like this. Oh, Lord, you, got, you really got to help me and all. You know, things are going to be, just, uh, you know, what I'm talking about, do you hear any depth and substance in that? No. Because the enemies tricked me, getting me to talk my emotions off the top of my head. Now, God hears that, yes. But he often can't answer it because it's a me, 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 me thing. 
I'm my own best friend. Hello. So we get past the me, me, me thing and we go, God, crucify, love me, help me, change me, fix me. And God just makes you into who he originally plans you to be. Can you say amen? So as you begin to seek God, God begins to guide our, guide our steps. And we learn being spiritual means to project God. When I pray, I project God out of my spirit man. Now, your spirit man is really your heart, your heart and soul. But you project God out of your spirit man. You want to say where Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Is he talking about right off the top of your head? He's talking about praying from your spirit man. He's not talking about praying in tongues. He's talking about when you pray, you project God out of your words. Okay, words are containers. They're capsules. That's why the, the gospel is called a gospel. <laughs> you fill your words with spirit and life and you speak them. Any good minister or preacher doesn't just ramble on projects God in the words that they say. Catherine Kuhlman was a great one for that. She'd say, how is everybody doing? Big flowing gowns and everything. Immediately she got everybody's attention. If she didn't say that, everybody would be wandering around looking for who's coming and who's not. And she says, hi, everyone bless you. Everyone's going, okay, focus, focus, focus. Don't be distracted. Focus. Say amen. First point. Let's go with the first. Did I hit four? Being spiritual also means that you save and restore lives. Listen, if you see a brother or sister and they are cutting some extra or some person down, they're not in the spirit. Say amen. And God gave us a warning three weeks ago. Don't attack any ministries. Do not complain do not speak against other Christians just leave it alone you say well who's going to correct them God what Satan likes to do is likes to get, see us indifferent and then get to arguing over it and immediately comes in like a little sucker and sucks all that energy and you feel drained and he feels energized because you are foolish enough to argue over silly things whoops Everyone say, not me. It's not me, Pastor Kerry. It's the woman you gave me. No. <laughs> All right, first point. Living in the spirit. Folks, there's no greater place to be. And it's not hard to live in the spirit. But you got to start off meeting with God first. So he can bring that spirituality to your forefront. So you meet with God and he gets you to strip off your old man. What does Romans 12 verse 1 say? It says, be not conformed to this world, be transformed, right? But it says, when you come before God, lay your body as a living sacrifice. So when you come to God, you say, Lord, I come to you and I lay my body down at your feet. Just imagine you throwing it at your feet. And now it's my spirit and my soul in tune with you. And just say the, see what you don't, saying those words sinks the reality. Saying the, what God's word says, the word confession means to say the same as God. So to say what God says when you pray, you're, you're just building a great reality in your thinking and everything else. Say amen. So you need to live in the spirit. Galatians verse Chapter 5, verse 16, write it down, through verse 18 says, Walk, this I say, walk in the spirit, that you shall not fulfill the lusts of your flesh. See, if every day you lay your flesh down, your flesh is not going to lust so much. You say, these people who preach grace all the time, that's just licensing people to sin. No, if you're with God all the time, the last thing you think about is sinning. <laughs> Come on now. The fact that you aren't with God, that's why you don't think that way now. You will, though, as you continue on. All right? So, to live in the Spirit. So, it goes on further. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. This is Galatians 5, 16 through 18. And the Spirit against the flesh because they're contrary. Folks, again, you'll have me say it to you. You are both Cain and Abel. 
Your spirit's able, and your flesh is a cane. He wants to kill, poo-poo, criticize. He wants to tell everybody what's wrong with everything. How can you tell, Pastor Kerry, when you're in the flesh? If you can't tell by now, <laughs> don't wait for anybody else to tell you. Moving right along. Are you guys here? All right, so look at to live in the spirit. So then it goes on further and it says, for they war against each other. He says, not only can you walk in the spirit, but also live in the spirit. So how do I do that? First starts with God. You meet God first. Before you say hi to your wife, hi to your family, you meet with God first and you say, welcome, oh God, I, I'm just welcoming. Now begin to operate me so that I'm a charming man during the day. Let's be honest. You've caught yourself out of sorts. Did you like that pretty picture? Of course not. So we go to God and let him make us spiritual. We don't make ourselves spiritual. We go to him and he makes us spiritual. And it happens gradually. And see, if you're not in a very consistent son, you're going to miss some of the 101, 102 classes. Some people say, you know, I never got that when I was younger. You probably were absent. <laughs> Moving right along. Amen. So go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, But God, who has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yes, even the deep things of God. What's going on here, Pastor Kerry? Well, Paul was writing to the Jewish and of those of Jewish persuasion. And he says, look, in the Old Testament, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them. But then you come right here. But God has revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. So we have to be spiritual to get what he's trying to tell us. Why does he do that, Pastor Kerry? Why does he give you revelation? Why does he talk to us spiritually? Because he doesn't want Satan informed on what he's telling you. Satan has no clue what God talks to you about. It's only when we tell everybody that he picks up on some of it. Come on. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. You know I'm talking, so listen. It goes on further to say, For what man th knows the things of a man except for the spirit of man, your spirit which is in you, and even so the things of God except for the spirit, capital S, of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know freely the things that have been given to us. Hello? They come here. God, you're smarter in your spirit than you are your dingle, your head. Your spirit, man, is, has the power in it. Who's the power? God. Amen. So we tap the source in us, not around us. Okay? And the source in us is already aware of every jot tittle of your life. And will reveal things when you're ready to receive it. And will do it in a direct order so that you grow exponentially. You grow mature and strong. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of Christians going to church and watching their behavior. You think they haven't listened to the thing that's being preached. Because we're supposed to be doers of the word and not. Amen. Bless your heart. So it goes on further to say, now, these things which had been hidden in the Old Testament, now they are revealed. These things we also speak in words, not with man's wisdom teaching, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spirit. Our fathers is spirit, and those that serve, worship, adore him, must serve him and worship, adore him in spirit and in truth. God doesn't even listen to your flesh. Romans 8, I think it's about verse 8. It says, no man in the flesh can please God. So we want to stay out of that. But I, I get up every day in my flesh. No, you, gotta, you misunderstand. You get up every day in your body. And your flesh is an entity of Satan's suggestions. So you can, when you get in the flesh, that's, you're following after the lust and the suggestions of the enemy and the sin natures in the flesh. But that's not in your spirit. You have God in your spirit. And your soul is being influenced. Say soul. soul. 
Jesus said, come out to me and you'll find rest to your souls. The problem is people don't come to him as often as they should. And don't make, and listen, I'm not picking on you. There were days, you know, I'd miss things and do things and want to do my own way. I used to have a set, of, everything that I've done all my life is training. I've trained people all my life. I don't know why God chose me to do this, but all my elders I trained. I mean, God trained through me. All ushers, Brother Shambaugh, all this stuff. And I'm saying, Lord, what are you doing? He says, because I want you to be a teacher and a trainer. Oh, psh, boy, you think I'd catch on to that. <laughs> but you think about it. God has something gracious and precious for every one of you. And you are the only one like you. So why would you withhold the gift that God has given you from the body of Christ by controlling your own gifts. Rather, let's just yield to God and do what he wants us to do and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. It's good to laugh. It's good to joke as long as it's not coarse. It's good to enjoy life. I do it with God. You know, people go on vacation, they'll leave God at home and their Bible. It won't bother to go to church while they're on vacation come back and they're more trash than when they went because they didn't follow through with God every day like we're supposed to. Folks, is this world our home? No. We're just passing through, aren't we? Yes. So what's going to keep us from being stuck here? Jesus and you following him. Remember, he's the first fruits. He's supposed to lead us out. Out of what? Not just sin, out of the planet. Nobody left the planet, Joe, until Jesus was the first one resurrected from the dead. Everybody in the Old Testament went into the heart of the earth called paradise, Abraham's bosom. Unable to leave the planet. One of the things I wanted to get to and never got to before all of the technological is that this planet is quarantined. So guess what? We're not being visited by aliens from other planets. It's quarantine. If there was life on other planets, and there might be, God doesn't want them polluted with our sin. So why would he send pure people that have never sinned to a planet that's full of it? Hey, let's get a camping out by the outhouse, Joe. We'll get a good whippy. Hello, we're in an outhouse, folks. The earth is pretty, but the foul fallen one is stenchy. He stinks, and if you get around his groups, they stink. There's a whole atmosphere. Now, remember, years ago, I used to break up witches' covens and satanic groups. Don't forget, okay? And we used to go to these places, and the stench and the, and the foulness of just the sin would just make the, the police officers, their skin would crawl. Man, we're in the greatest time, the greatest adventure, if we stop picking on one another. Let's join forces and take over. Moving right along. So we need to live in the spirit. What that actually means is we're with God, we try to surround ourselves with God, and we're, catch this, you can catch yourself when you're not in the spirit. It's okay. And, and as you start off walking with God and trying to be in the spirit, you're going to catch yourself messing up. Remember, you're a child of God and not a sinner. So God works with you. He reasons with you. He doesn't slap you around. Stand you in the corner. <laughs> Hello. He works with us. My little boy, he made a big mistake and he dented my car, a brand new car. Did he stop being my boy? No, he's just out of fellowship. So if somebody confesses in their heart that Lord Jesus Christ, they're sealed. Okay? Now whether they ever walk with God or not, they still have a seal on them and they still will stand before God and give an account of their life. Everybody does. So don't you want a whole lot of erased spots in your life where you blew it and God erased it? Say amen. amen. 
and you go to God and you say, God, yesterday I was such a jerk. You remember all that? And God will say, I don't remember that. What, God? Were you sleeping? He says, no, I don't remember you. Didn't you ask me to forgive you? Yeah, he says, why well, throw it? I choose to forget it. Why are you bringing it back up to me? Because that's what the enemy does. He keeps bringing up to you your failures. Let me say this again. I don't care where you've been. I care where you end up. I don't want to know what you went through unless you feel like you want to share that with me. And that's okay. And then we'll pray. But to go on and talk about your past and everything, it's, it's just a trick of the enemy. Because now you're bearing a tale of your sorrow. And the Bible says fellowship his sufferings, not ours. <laughs> say amen, somebody. All right. So everyone say, I, I'm going to live in the spirit. And I need God's help. A couple of little things I'm going to throw your way. Number one, to be spiritual, we must get our wisdom and our direction from God who lives inside of us. Otherwise, if you try to get it out here, remember who's the prince of power of the air. Whether you know it or not, Satan has a whole group of invisible creatures sitting in your atmosphere. They've been there since the beginning of time. That's why he's called the Prince of Power of the Air. You just can't see him. Now, the funny thing is, America is getting better at their technologies. Now we've got infrared and all that. And guess what we see flying through there? It's been there all the time. All these UFO stuff. We're going, where did they come from? They were always there. We were just blind. Folks, go out back 100 years. What kind of technology did we have? Hello. Let me say this to you. This will thrill you. God has all of his hosts and helpers in this planet. They're ready to help you. They're ready for you to get up on the word and believe the word so they can guide you through life. Now, there's an enemy out there, and their job is to frustrate you and get you to take your eyes off God. Whatever we give our attention to is going to get our attention. Can you say amen? Now, I'm not saying we ignore the devil. I'm just saying we just turn him over to, the, to God every time he, he raises his face. How many here has ever assaulted a slug? Yes. The devil is a slug. You have the word of God. It's the salt. We are the salt, but we have the salt. Spew it on him. Release God on him. Project God on him. We don't do that because we're not taught that in church. Oh, I rebuke you. I take authority. You. And you're doing it in the flesh. And the devil is just laughing. But you whisper Jesus in the spirit. He'll run in terror. Learn the difference. 15 inches of disaster or success. Are you with me? Second point. Being spiritual is being under the control of, of God and what he, what we do or say. How many ever had God put your finger on your tongue and say, don't say that. <laughs> Come on, we need more of that. Say amen. I'll tell you a thing or two. How about not? You know, Can, amen. So, Let's look at this. What we say and do, okay? Go with me to Ephesians um, chapter uh, 4. Look at verses 14 through 15. Can I step down and grab my water? I couldn't bring it up here. Hi, everybody. I know. Gosh, one of these days I'll get real professional and lose the anointing. <laughs> no, I don't want to. All right, so let's, let's look at this now. Ephesians 4, verse 14. That which we should no longer be children. That we should no longer be children. God wants us to grow, doesn't he? How do we get mature? By being in the spirit. Okay? You can be really polished. Some people are real disciplined at certain things. But that doesn't make them spiritual. I seem to be able to remember a lot of scripture. Does that make me spiritual? Nope. What makes me spiritual is being under the control of the Holy Spirit. Hello. And it's something God does, not something I do. Hello. Amen. Now listen to this. And let's be no longer children tossed to and fro by and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness and the deceitful plotting, 
but instead, speaking the truth in love, you may grow up in all things in him who is the head, even Christ. So here we are. What we do and say has to be guided by the Spirit. Then it goes on in James chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, My brethren, let not many of you desire to be a teacher. Why? Listen. Knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. Now listen carefully. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a mature man, a perfect man, and able to bridle or control his future. Hello? How many here has ever ridden a horse? On the, on the horse, you're giving two reins, right? If you ride the horse with tight reins, the horse will fight against you and you, you'll get a ride like this. If you just don't use the reins and let the horse do itself, you'll find yourself back at the barn because it'll do its own thing. But we're to ride a horse with loose reins. So if we just tug on one, it knows to go right. Just tug on the other, it knows to go left. No yanking, no jerking. Can you say amen? So is your tongue. Your tongue is a steering wheel. So be careful. Because you'll likely end up in the ditch if you get upset. My biggest problem, let me confess my fault to you, is calling people names. Like I'm in traffic, somebody pulls in front of me, I call them. You shouldn't. I, I'm telling you that's wrong. I got on my case about it. He said to me, son, if you want to move in the power of God, you really got to make sure you don't judge nor call people names. Hello? And boy, I've been wrestling with it for about a half year now. But he's getting it out of me. He's getting it out of me because it just seems to be natural. What a stupid thing it is, oh, man. And the per lady's just driving off so happy. And you're all upset because you're so smart. She almost wrecked your car and yet she didn't. And you're all upset. How smart is that? Come on. Amen. Let's move on to the next point. So what you do, what you say, we're going to have to give an account thereof. I can't stay too long on these. But here's the scriptures. Ephesians 4, 14 through 15, James chapter 3, 1 and 2. And 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5, just so you can look them up later. And by the way, get these notes. Order the notes, get the notes, because then you go back over them and you go, wow, I, did, I missed that. Oh, that's really cool, because then God's able to bring it back. Can you say amen? Third point is being spiritual is projecting the fruit and the power of God. Folks, we're known by, a uh, tree is known by its what? Uh, we taught that last week and so, right? So if you wanted oranges, you don't go to the peach trees. If you want Jesus, you don't go to the cults. If you want Jesus, you don't go to a religious church because they'll tell you, sit down, join. Once we get you joined and signed up, then God's going to get you into the program. Now, listen, it sounds like I'm, I'm playing all that stuff down. No, that's what man does. We like to make clubs and stuff, and it's just that kind of nature of man. But God didn't say for you to sign up, and he just said to surrender and give your life to him and walk with him, and he'll make your life beautiful. Say amen. No signing up. <laughs> I used, to, I used to laugh because I, I'm really praying hard for some musicians to really know how to worship God. I'm a worshiper. And a lot of times, you know, they, we get musicians, but they're all, they're, they're not ready to worship God. They're just ready to play. And I don't want people just playing. We can go to a bar for that. I'm not going to go to a bar, but, you know, I mean, you could sit out in the restaurant and listen to it. But no, I want people to be able to Worship God and bring the glory down and bring the people into the glory by their worship. Say amen, somebody. And that's what we're believing for. And I would like for you to stand with me. Amen. Everyone look at Scott and say, Scott. No. <laughs> I love you, brother. Yeah. Amen. 
All right, so we, you know a tree by its fruit, and I don't want to linger long because I'm already over a bunch of stuff because of our delay. But think about it. We're to project Jesus, right? So let me quote this for you. For the fruit of the Spirit is long love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. That's nine fruit portions. Everyone say fruit portions. So the fruit is Jesus. The portions is Jesus is expressed in a person. Lots of love. If you really love Jesus, there's going to be a lot of love in you. Because Jesus is love. God is there's going to be a lot of joy. How many here have seen joy, experienced God's joy? Nothing like it. It's wonderful. Amen. And his peace. Man, I'd rather be led through this earth in peace. Okay. Under God's control than all tormented and stirred up. Amen. So one of the things you've got to realize, if you are a born-again Christian, and you are, you, the things you do should have the fruit of the Spirit in them. You should do it in love. You should do it in joy. Okay? You should do it with peace, with long-suffering. Nobody showed up to help me with the ushers. That's not long-suffering. I can do it. Amen. You know what I mean? Long-suffering. So if you're doing something for God, there should be a lot of fruit there. People want to be next to you. They want to know about you. They want to love you because you're fruitful. Say amen. Now, the fruit isn't the works. You have works. We are made for good works. We are to have the fruit in the work we do. Say amen. If I'm pastoring, I should be a fruitful pastor, not a crabby one. Can you say amen? Or a bitter one. Take out, I, I don't know about you, you always hurt the one you love, you know. I mean, it's just like that sometimes. Why do we get frustrated with those that are loyal? Well, pastoring is not easy because if Satan was going to take any of us out first, who do you think he'd pick? Yeah. So thank you for your prayers. Pray over my wife and I so we don't end up sick or disease or dying ahead of time. It's congregations that usually kill their pastors. Because they're always taken from them all the time and not putting back. How many know you can't do that in the bank? Take, 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 take. And don't put anything back. Amen. How about you, Christian back there? Are you always taking and taking or are you giving too? Giving. Well, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> Silly. Are you with me? And so we project the love of God, project the power of God. Folks, I don't even doubt for a minute that the people I pray for aren't going to be healed. I don't have any doubts. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because I'm not doing it. Jesus in me is a healer. And when I lay hands on the sick, I just squirt them out my arm. And release the anointing out there. Hello? I'm, I'm just being silly with you. When I preach, can you feel something when I'm preaching? I'm bringing God out in the words that I'm saying. You look for that when you're looking for a church or looking for a man or a woman of God. Ladies, you want that man to be anointed. <laughs> and guys, you want that woman to be a woman, a handmaiden of the Lord. Say amen. Otherwise, you're going to be babysitting. Moving right along. <laughs> All right, my last point. Being spiritual is projecting the power of God and restoring others. Go with me to Galatians chapter 6, please. I know I probably overlooked a couple of scriptures for you, but I'm trying to get us out of here in a decent time. How are we doing, honey? <laughs> Whatever that means. Okay, all right. So go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. I think of Ephesians 5. Is that what I want? Uh, yeah, no, Galatians chapter 5, 1 through 5. Okay. Our job, 6. Our job, yeah, I said it first right. Our job is to allow God out. God moves in compassion. And you'll know, let's say a situation happens and you go to try to help, and God says, back off. What are you going to do then? 
Why would he do that? Because there's something there he doesn't want you exposed to. Hello? Amen. And I, I know several times we were in Enumclaw with the police department because they had a couple of mutilated cows. One was a little one, one was a big one. And there were footprints going into the, the steers and everything like that. But, but the idea behind following the leading and having the power and projecting restoration is that police officer was so scared because of what he heard, he's not born again, that I had to pray for him so he could finish his investigation. We found nothing because most of the cattle mutilations and animal mutilations are not done from humans. Okay, and that's another story we'll get some other time. If you ever get a chance, look up this man. His name is L.A. Mazzulli. L.A. Mazzulli is a born-again, spirit-filled Christian. He also was a worship leader for the, for the vineyards in California, Van Nuys. And um, he got into studying all this stuff that the enemy is doing. He got some great stuff out. And it's very biblical based. It's not weird, whacked out stuff. One of the things he's saying is, this is the Antichrist's time. So what Satan has to do is he has to make a lot of noise. He's got to get everybody's attention off of God because what's going to happen shortly, we're going to be yanked out of here. Say amen. All right, so we need to restore. So Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any fault or trespass, tell your neighbors and tell the pastor. No. Boy, you guys must not be, you must be tired. Okay. He says, Brethren, if a man's overtaken in, in a trespass, you who are spiritual under the control of the spirit, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. Say Amen. And then if you don't do it in that spirit, consider yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he de deceives himself. But let each one, each one of us, examine our own work, and then we will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one will bear his own responsibility. Hello. Isn't that good? But notice when somebody's blown it, our job is to criticize or to restore. If you ever see me out of sorts, which is something you probably never will. But if you see, come to restore me, not to pick on me. I mean, I, I'm amazed. If people will listen to somebody, I'll make a comment, and immediately they take it negative. Where is that coming from? The devil. Hello? And, yeah, either that or we can't hear very well. <laughs> anyway, that's okay, that's me. All right, so let's go on. Last scripture, everyone say last scripture. First John 5, 14 through 18. It's talking about in your prayer life, folks, when you pray, when you see a brother that's sinning or making mistakes, don't sit around and criticize, pray and you'll save him. Hello? I didn't know my prayers were that powerful. Absolutely. There have been rock and roll stars that have gotten saved. How many here remember little Richard? Yeah. yeah. Amen. I saw little Richard filled with the Holy Spirit at a Shambox meeting. And it's given this testimony and insurance, you know, and he says, the reason why I wore all this makeup, did all this kind of stuff, because I was trying to find myself. I found myself in Jesus. Little Richard, then he went on to be with God. I don't know if he's still alive, but I saw that and I went, wow, pray for these people. Don't go, oh, aren't they terrible? No. Say, Lord, change their terribleness. Sick them, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Come on, we're the most powerful people in the world. We've got Almighty God in us. Amen. And we're walking around like paupers, and fighting amongst ourselves, and picking on each other. You like fish, and I don't like fish. What's that have to do with anything? All the ploy of the enemy. God make us smart and give us wisdom. Listen to this scripture. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will or word, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, if you know he's listening to you, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask. Hello? You see, when I bring God 
or I go before God in prayer, I have a, some petitions. And they're all lined out according to God's word, rolled up. Okay, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I, I'm petitioning you. Your word says, your word says, your word says, your word says, your word says. Father, I lift up your word. Guide me. Your word says. And Lord, here are my petitions. Take them. And God takes them. You no longer have any care about them. And he starts carrying them out. Hello? You ever signed a petition? Be careful which one you sign. Okay, and, and finally, it goes on further. If any of you see a brother that's sinning a sin that is not unto death, you may what? You may ask for him soul. Then it goes on and says, there is a sin that leads to death. I do not pray, say that you should pray for that. Okay, so let me explain. That's an old English word and kind of a, a, a kind of off translation. When you see somebody doing something Immediately, if it's wrong, pray for them. Don't criticize them because then you'll get in trouble. Pray for them and give them and put them over on the altar. Say amen. Lord, I pray for Carrie. It seems like it's something's bothering him today. I don't know what it is and I'm not going to meddle. So Lord, I take Carrie and I put him on the altar. Work everything out for him. Thank you, Father. Then my father is my father and you're not meddling in my business. Say amen. But there is a sin that leadeth to death. You know what that sin is? Is never receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay. That means that, have you ever known anybody that you went to them and you told them about Jesus and they told you where to go? Then you came back and you shared with them again. They told you where to go. And it just seems like they just didn't want anything to do with God. Don't give up on them. They're still savable. It's not until they drop off into hell that nothing can be done. So everybody's a potential salvation soul. Can you say amen? And there's some are real hard. I'll tell you about those. I love people that tell me, I don't want your Jesus. I said, keep running. Keep running. Run, run, run away from God. Because you'll run right into them. And they do. Look at me. I cussed and cursed at people with a bong in my hand and a beer. What are you doing on my porch sharing Jesus? And they said, we, we don't want you to go to hell. I'm already in hell. That's what I said. What a dumb thing to say. Anyway, are you blessed this morning? Did that bless you? Yes. Did it minister to your heart? Yes. It's a good word for you, Diana. I mean, because the enemy wants to pull you back into, I don't know, it's kind of like an idle, just nominal Christian type stuff. And God says he's got more for you than you even can imagine. I mean, mighty things. So we need to not settle, folks. We need to pursue God. Don't just settle. Pursue God. Keep pursuing him. Now listen, we have some wonderful things that are happening in your life. Those things God builds on. He never takes those things away from you. You see, he builds on all the good, and he helps you to get rid of the bad and put it in this place. Say amen. If you got something out of this morning, will you give the Lord lots of praise?